Brown Buxel, and we are having another V Brown back today about VCAC. Today is the second of September, and we again have Phil Monk as a presenter who will be talking about advanced extensibility for VCAC or VCAC, anything as a service, XAS, and the advanced service designer. If you're ready, over to you, Phil, then. Cool, no problem. Thank you very much, Frank. Um, so, hi, as Frank said, my name is uh, Philip Monk. I'm a senior consultant for VMware. Um, I've done a few of these uh, presentations over the last couple of months, so um, some of you might have seen some of my other material. Um, this is the last one, which, uh, which I hopefully have planned, and uh, we're going to talk about uh, advanced extensibility in VCAC. Uh, we'll be focusing mainly on the advanced service designer, uh, creating actions with, uh, for uh, machine blueprints and machine services that are created um, as part of your offerings for your cloud tenants. Um, the reason I've decided to cover this topic uh, is mainly because this is something I get asked a lot of questions about, um, not just from customers, but we also have a, a lot of discussion internally about how to assign actions to, to items, etc. Um, I'll also cover roughly how to create um, some uh, X as a service offerings. So uh, that allows us to create anything as a service and your prerequisites that you need to be able to create using these anything as a service items um, to be able to assign actions to those as well. Um, I'll give you some examples where I can. Uh, there are some screenshots in this presentation um, and I will probably be talking quite a lot over it as well to try and give you some real life examples and real life scenarios that I see every day in my consulting. So this, uh, this page is just uh, the standard about me that I've used in some of my other presentations as well. So I've uh, just been working at VMware for uh, a year and a half, um, it's actually a year and three quarters now. Um, I'm a senior consultant in our cloud automation team. We have some sub-teams in uh, our PSO organization and, and I fall inside that. Um, I've been working with VMware products for about 10 years and I'm hoping to gain my VCDX in the next sort of 12 to 18 months. You can follow me on uh, Twitter or you can uh, try and uh, join me on LinkedIn if you'd like. Okay, so uh, we'll jump straight in. So the first thing I wanted to show you was uh, to try and focus on what we were gonna, gonna talk about is the advanced service designer. Um, as some of you who have followed blogs of people building POCs for VCAC, or some of you that may be using VCAC in your, your lab environments or in your companies, you should be familiar with, with this tab. Um, it's a tab along the top that you get when you're a service architect role. Uh, that can be configured um, inside the the uh, VCAC tenant, so you can go in and, and configure service architects for each different tenant, um, if obviously because each tenant's going to have different architects for creating the services. So the ASD is driven by VCO, so uh, this first screenshot just demonstrates that you go to the advanced services tab and you, you click on our services blueprints or you can click on resource actions, you'll get this first uh, screen which gives you the, the view into the uh, orchestrated workflows that are created. Um, for the example here, we're going to be using a standard VCO workflow that is out of the box, um, which is for renaming a virtual machine. So this screenshot here gives you a, a rough overview of what the screen looks like to make sure you're in the right location. Okay, so our, our only thing as a service, we're going to focus on here um, creating resource actions. So this is the next tab down. You can see uh, the, the previous screen was our uh, was for the service blueprints tab at the top here and then this screen is focusing on our resource actions tab at the bottom here. So in the customer engagements I've had we create blueprints for virtual machines and we create uh, services and then we create the, the catalog items and, and give them the entitlements for users to be able to see them. We, uh, we come with a standard list of actions, things like power on, power off, uh, snapshots, they're all actions that are assigned to the virtual machines very often we're asked if we can assign uh, custom ones, uh, things such as uh, being able to assign an action to request a backup for a virtual machine, uh, things to be able to request uh, that antivirus is installed. Um, it's, uh, you can have a list, uh, several customers are asked us to, to actually list different applications that they request are installed. Some of these are, are installed on in an automated fashion and some of them send emails to support teams to, to schedule installations. Um, but there can be a wide range of, of actions that you can assign to virtual machines. So the request we've got here, which you can see is has been pre-populated in my lab environment, is a request to, to back up a VMDK file. 
that's um, we won't be using that as our example. Like I said, we'll be using rename a virtual machine, but but uh, requesting a VMDK backup is an actual real life scenario. Okay. So when we look at uh, as I was saying, when we try and browse through VCO to have a look at all the different workflows that, that we can we can create and we can use, you'll see everything that you create, and you'll see everything from uh, from the library as well. So we've created here a uh, we're selecting the rename virtual machine workflow, which will allow us to, to rename a virtual machine in, in vCenter to give it a name that that is either uh, representable to the user or, or maybe representable to to, to something else that they're, they're manipulating the virtual machine to do. So they might provision the virtual machine to start with for one purpose and then it might have a different purpose later on rather than recreate it or reprovision it, they want to keep some previous work. So this is the view you'll get. It's a tree view, it's a live view of your VCO server. So if you uh, add a workflow, it instantly appears. There's no synchronization that's used. It's, it's a, a complete live view of, of what you've got. When we select our workflow, we, we can view some basic information on the on the pane on the, on the side of the screen, which shows us the main uh, brief description that's specified, and uh, we can also see our input and our output parameters that are assigned to this virtual machine, this um, workflow. Sorry. So once we've selected the workflow that we want to create, we then get on to designing the form. Now there are a number of things we can specify in, in when we design these forms, and this is made. Quite, quite easy and quite straightforward by the, the fields alongside. You can drag and drop uh, different options that you want. When you first get to this screen, it will be pre-populated with some values that the uh, workflow, uh, but the ASD sorry, looks at the workflow and looks at what the, the input parameters are and then specifies um, an object field based on, on what the input is, what it thinks is best. So for uh, this workflow we're using here, we have a um, an entry for a virtual machine, which we can see, um, uh, which might not be obvious from the screenshot, but it's basically a, uh, a tree view of the, your current infantry in your VM, in your uh, virtual infrastructure. Uh, that is a, a field which really we, we sort of have to, to stick with. You can pre-populate it with some, some information if you want, or, but we recommend you just sort of view, leave it as it is and just browse through the tree view to select your virtual machine. The field underneath is, uh, is a text field for the new name that you want to specify for the virtual machine. Um, now this can possibly be um, be set to uh, a drop-down menu where we could have information with regards to some pre-populated names. We could have information um, uh, which is featured in this screenshot here where we can specify that the field has to be filled in. Um, is it a read-only field? We can specify values that are set in there. We can also customize the, the inputs that we want for, for some of the fields. If we were going to have that as a drop-down menu with some pre-populated names, uh, we would drag the, the option from the drop-down menu here, and then we'd then get prompted with something along the lines on here, which would allow us to pre-populate some of the values. So the next one on the action screen is around the um, the options that we get to assign um, on the input values. So the one we had previously on the previous screen, we could see that the uh, the virtual machine on the drop-down menu here is actually a, a tree uh, is a, a tree view. But if we're assigning this as an action rather than creating it as a, a blueprint from scratch, then we have some of the fields pre-populated with what the value is. So this field here is asking us, um, we're creating this as a, a brand new service where we would go and we'd select a virtual machine that we want to rename. If we're creating it as an action against an existing virtual machine, the name of the virtual machine, of the, the object that we're selecting, the virtual machine is already defined because we've, we're selecting the action against that virtual machine. So our input resources here are different, whereas we have a predefined value of the virtual machine name, um, and then we have an input parameter which is still defined as a text field for, uh, for the new VM name. And then when we browse on to the next screen uh, on the action configuration, we can see that the new name field is, is now a text field. And again, we could reconfigure that to populate it with drop-down menus, and we could reconfigure it to populate it with, um, make it a mandatory field, we can put some, uh, values in there which are predefined, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So the difference you'll see in the forms before between creating actions and and brand new services is is slightly different um, with regards to, to this view. Okay. <clears throat> 
So our advanced service designer on, on our actions, once we've created an action, we, we then, or once you've created a, a service as well, a blueprint, you then need to publish that blueprint to users. So the blueprint can be created and can be configured and and, and uh, messed around with it without people actually seeing it in their inventory, it can be hidden. So uh, once it's published, uh, it's then presented to an entitlement group. Um, the entitlement group needs to be defined uh, as to, to which entitlement group can see it. So not all of your tenants. Um, your, so if you've published, for example, a Windows 2012 blueprint to, to your tenant organization and you only want maybe half a dozen users uh, to be able to request to, to back up the the actual virtual machine or, or the um, uh, or to be able to rename some of their virtual machines and you can publish this um, entitlement to just those users you create, create an entitlement group and you would publish those users into that entitlement group and then you would publish this um, action to that entitlement group to allow those users to be able to perform those actions on their virtual machines so actions aren't tied to blueprints or, or virtual machines, they're tied to entitlement groups which then tie them to the user's resources. So we can see on the, uh, <coughs> on the, the screenshot here, we published a um, action and then we can see below that we're going to select it as a bit of being entitled for, for this entitlement group that we've selected below. Okay, and once we've selected the, uh, the entitlement that we want to use, we can uh, we then browse the we browse as a user who's been assigned that entitlement action, and we can see what we've configured in their action view alongside their virtual machines. So we can see here we can um, we can see the rename virtual machine action alongside here, which is one that we've created and published, and we can also see the previous one which I was detailing um, with regards to the MDK backup request. So these actions are now alongside, and when they're clicked on, they take you to the forms that we've previously created that can be filled in and, and the VCO workflow executes in the background. Now for, uh, for a number of these, these actions there are emails that are sent to the users to confirm whether they're, they're successful or, or they're going to they're gonna run in a, a timely manner if they fail etc. They give them status updates. Um, that's, that's something that, that some users find useful and some users sometimes find a bit irritating. So they can be disabled if you really want them to be. If we go back a few slides, sorry, to creating our service requests here. So some of the the common ones that, that we also get asked is, uh, it's okay to sign an action to a virtual machine, but what if I if I want to request a load balancer um, from NSX, or, or what if I want to create a virtual network in NSX, um, and then I want to, for example, attach a virtual machine, or, or, or I want to destroy that network afterwards, how, how would I assign those actions to those objects? So we, we create some workflows in VCO to be able to provision NSX workloads, uh, such as load balances and, and uh, virtual networks, and then we can assign actions in the same way that we do to virtual machine blueprints to the blueprints for the uh, NSX objects. So these can be defined in, in a number of ways. Whenever you're creating a service blueprint for your, your NSX load balancer or your, or your NSX network, there will, there's an option around the top here which says provision resource. Now this gives you a, uh, an option to, to have a, an item into your, uh, your items tab to allow you to manipulate at a later stage. Now some of the, um, some of the advanced <coughs> plugins such as dynamic types will, will allow you to return an object from, from uh, creating these networks to be able to populate an items view inside your, uh, your ASD or your, your VCAC portal. So, these give you the options to then go through exactly the same way that we've gone through here with creating uh, actions to assign to the, the objects and then we can associate the, the object here with, uh, with a resource type of the, the object that's returned from when we create the NSX network or the, the NSX load balancer. <coughs> So we can see with some of the options uh, that we can get in the actions menu, you can basically define any sort of extensibility that you like. Some of the um, some of the standard ones out of the box, such as the restart and shutdown, suspend. These actions can be uh, oh, these actions can be uh, controlled uh, at the at the screen where we assign the entitlements. So if we go to here, you can see some of the, the standard objects we've got to find down here. 
can be um, can be selected or, or removed based on on users' rights as well. <clears throat> so with the advanced service designer, you've really got you know power to to be able to automate anything you like with the view into uh, VCO. If you have a VCO workflow, you can create an, an anything as a service object um, inside VC, uh, ASD for people in VCAC to be able to to revision things. Some common use cases we see are around um, <clears throat> as anything of a service, some of the standard ones that come out of the box are things like adding AD groups. Um, you can create uh, users and, and add them to groups, create groups and add users to them, etc. You can also, um, we have some uh, some advanced workflows where we actually have anything as a service for system administrators to be able to, to onboard um, tenants. So we have a predefined checklist that tenants have to provide um, a certain amount of information or fill out some forms. Uh, and then their, their tenant is actually automated in, in creation inside VCAC. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I've sort of whizzed through my uh, my slides now. Um, I can see there's a few people who joined the, the webinar. Is, does anyone have any questions? If you do, just raise your hand and I can unmute you. Otherwise, you can also use Twitter with the vbrownback hashtag or just use either the chat or the questions bar on your right side. What you talked about, the service designer for, that's all basically built-in functionality, correct? You you don't need any extra special setup um, to run through as, as soon as you have rolled out uh, VCAC. Um, that's functionality you can consume. Yes, yeah, so it's ASD, uh, Advanced Service Designer is, is part of inbuilt functionality of VCAC. The, uh, whereas with previous versions like um, 5.1 and 5.2, we had um, it was very difficult to customize anything basically. You had to use the VCAC um, designer which was to be honest quite a nasty tool and unless you had the, the CDK plugin for Visual Studio you, you were very limited on what you could um, what you could sort of automate as your, your spin-offs for your virtual machines. So, um, so yeah it makes things a lot, a lot more simpler. All, all you need to do once you follow some of the POC guides that are online is just make sure that the user you're logging in with um, to, to create some of the um, uh, the IIS components needs to be a service architect and then to create the um, the uh, administrator and create the services and catalog items and, and actions like we've got here you need to be a, uh, a tenant admin as well. In 5.2 you actually had the possibility to run that all through VCO. Um, is that still possible in 6? Uh, so the the um, VCO, uh, I can't remember what they called it now. Was it was the Advanced Extensibility Pack or something they called it, didn't they? Or the yeah. Sometimes it's just called the Add-in, but that um, no, most of those, all of well, nearly everything in that now isn't really applicable to, to six point zero. You can do everything that that did um, with the ASD designer, and, and it does it a lot better as well. I haven't actually tried to use the, the VCO add-in or package against uh, 6.0, so I don't know what will actually happen if you try and run it. Um, but yeah, the, uh, there's not really any, any benefit uh, in using that. Apart from the create snapshot or create backup, um, can you tell us something about uh, some of the more common use cases you see customers actually requesting? And yeah, maybe sure. Even some some resources where uh, where customers could actually find some some predefined workflows already, so not for them to have to reinvent the wheel. Yeah, sure. There are there are a couple of good websites out there for for getting um, for getting some some VCO workflows to be able to to, to use some of these services. So some of the uh, the common use cases we see, like I've said before, is. Uh, is backup and, and NSX network um, consuming NSX resources. We also see things for like, um, uh, example, one of the projects I'm working on now that they want to be able to to integrate with um, an external IPAM system. Um, so that is included in the provisioning of the virtual machine stage. But we also have uh, ASD to be able to to use uh, to have an action alongside to be able to um, renew a, a VM's IP address or request a different IP address. Um, there's, there's some actions we see. 
Um, things like activating antivirus, um, that's something that, that's a common use case as well for for, uh, for along the sides. And we're starting to see more and more um, X as a service request for uh, our uh, what used to be called VCHS, which is now called uh, vCloud Air, um, for being able to provision and move virtual machines in and out of um, the, the vCloud Air resource if you have that as an endpoint. Um, there are common things as well. We very often see one of the very common requests is uh, a tenant wants to be able to create their own templates, so they want to, uh, or create their own blueprints, uh, so they want to be able to provision a, a global blueprint, uh, something that the system admin builds, uh, like a, a vanilla Windows 2008 or 2012 image, um, tinker with it and, and put what they want to put on it, and then make that a, a template or a blueprint that they can deploy from in the future. So we then have uh, an X as a service um, workflow package, which takes the um, takes the VM they created, um, prepares, sysprep's it, and then creates it as a template, and then also creates the the blueprint um, configuration inside VCAC um, using the VCAC APIs from VCO. So that's um, that's a very very common one, um, and and there are packages out there. I've seen kicking around the internet, but some of our, our colleagues have released on their own blog sites. Um, you might see uh, some, of, some of the workflows, I'd recommend good sites to go to are things like the VCO team um, website, that's very good for, for gaining um, VCO knowledge and also for there, there's some workflows that um, Christoph and uh, some of the other guys keep on their Jurg and stuff as well which are, which are commonly requested for. Um, as for stuff that we produce in PSO, we're very limited on what we can, um, what we can share, we can't really share um, information but that a customer pays us to develop something for, so you might not see a lot come out of um, or shared from from PSO guys, but the people uh, in the communities are always sharing information. Do you uh, do you see much um, much on sort of the GSS side for for uh, troubleshooting this sort of stuff, Frank? <laughs> Unfortunately, not since I'm not supporting it. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. <laughs> Um, can can you recommend any any books trainings for people who want to get started, especially uh, with uh, VCO, the Advanced Service Designer, etc., for the extensibility of VCAC, not yeah, just sure. leverage the the default functionality, but to actually customize the system. Yeah, sure. There's um, there are, there is some training that's offered for uh, 6.0, um, and uh, it it does cover. So some basic ASD configuration. Um, unfortunately, uh, I, I'm not. I can't really recommend any course at the moment because I think they're all changing. Because uh, there is an imminent new release um, coming soon. So I'm not sure um, what the what training is available for at the moment for 6.0 and what's going to be available for for a forthcoming possible release. Um, books wise, uh, there's not really many books out for VCAC at the moment. Maybe there's an opportunity for someone to write one. Um, from what I've seen, anyway, um, there are some very good blogs out there. Um, Adam uh, Bowles' blog is very good for for integration and automation. Um, although I don't think he's he's updated it uh, in a little while, but there's some good stuff on there to get people started. Uh, the VCAC team and the VCO team blogs are, are very, uh, blogs, sorry, are very good as well. They have lots of information on them, and, and some of the um, well, so some of the best stuff and most. Uh, exp simplified uh, installation processes I've seen, uh, probably from Kendrick Coleman, um, he's, he's done some very good blogs on configuring a, your PSC, a POC environment for yourself uh, and I do this every, nearly every day, design and install and every now and then I refer to that to jog my memory about something because there's so so many menus that are inside menus that are inside options in, in this product but uh, sometimes you forget where to go to locate something. So, uh, so that's a, a blog I'd recommend as well. Um, and uh, I've, I've started seeing some very good stuff coming out of uh, Magnus Anderson's blog as well. But he's, uh, he's doing some pretty cool stuff as well with, with extensibility and VCAC. Are you allowed to talk a little bit about the upcoming release? On I'm not. I'm not. I'm afraid. No, <laughs> I'm not even allowed to say if it is if it's going to be released or not. I just know there's there's always a new version on the horizon, isn't there? Okay. Does anyone else have any questions? If yes, please raise your hand or just post them to the chat. So my uh, my goal of this was just to, to basically be able to to give people a, 
a view of how to go in and start doing stuff like this themselves. Um, and I, I'm not one for hand holding. I don't believe people learn anything from hand holding. So if you go in and and you you start to to follow some of the screens I've showed you here, and so follow some of the basics, and uh, there will be things that you'll have to figure out yourselves, and there will be uh, workflows, things that won't work, and things that you'll have to tinker with. Um, but that that's the way that people learn. That's the way that I learn anyway. So do we have any questions from anyone? Well, it doesn't look like I've got any questions. Then I'd say that's a wrap. Yeah, I think that's um, it's a short, short session for today, but I think that's probably about it. <laughs> Thank you very much for presenting. No problem. If anyone wants any more information or wants to talk to me direct, uh, you can get me on Twitter or you can uh, email me. And yeah, thank you for attending, and we're looking forward to see you next week. Cool. No worries. Speak to everyone soon. Bye bye. Cheers. Thanks. Bye.